So I've been asked to share my call on the priesthood. And really, if I wanted to title it, I'd have to title it, Change My Heart. Okay? So I want to go back to when I was young. Now, I've got a few extra minutes. Thanks, uh, Father Terry. You gave me five extra minutes. <laughs> um, I'm from, you know, where am I from? What do you do when you say Saskatchewan? You bow your head. Okay. Where am I from? Okay, that's much better. That's a couple years off purgatory for you. I'm from a, a family of, of seven. And we grew up on the, on the farm, and faith was always something that was important to us. The only problem was, is it really was just important to us on Sunday. All right? And, um, but mom always made sure that we were at Mass, and she was a very faithful woman. When I was younger, there was always, um, there was always a joy in my heart. There was always a joy that was there, and, and I, I loved singing. All right? It was just part of who I was. Um, one of the things we did to uh, help um, get money for winter clothes and that, we trapped. So I would go on the trap line and, you know, I'd be off over here and I'd sing all the way over there, all the way around. It was just, you know, it would just bring me a lot of joy, okay? And when I was 11, my parents separated. And we moved to Saskatoon. Um, and all the joy seemed to have kind of gone. You know, well, what have I got to be joyful about? My dad's not with us. Mom is really struggling mentally, like she was having a nervous breakdown. You know, and it was just a real hard time for the family. But then my mom and my aunt, one of my aunts, heard about these meetings. You know, now this is back in the early, this is like 70, 71, and, and they thought, okay, well, we'll try this meeting because, um, you know, for them, Al-Anon wasn't exactly what they were looking for. So they went to these, this prayer meeting, all right, and they saw a nun there, and they saw a priest there, and they thought, okay, well, it looks like it's Catholic. <laughs> but they continued to go, and of course, it was a charismatic prayer group, right? And there they found the strength and the courage that they needed. And my mom invited me to, to come to one of these meetings. And, you know, I would have been 13 at the time. And I thought, you know, <laughs> she says, well, do you want to come to a prayer meeting? 13-year-old, <laughs> like, a prayer? <laughs> so I said, well, what do they do, you know? And she says, well, we pray. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of figured that. <laughs> and, but then she also said, you know, there's a lot of music and we do a lot of singing. And that caught my attention because for two years, I really didn't do a whole lot of singing. And so that really caught my attention. And so I started going and there I found the Lord, right? I found Jesus. And even though the faith didn't go as deep as it needed to go, he planted a seed. See, at the age of 15, I decided because, really, I was the only one there my age who really wanted to be there. No one else my age wanted to be there. They were forced by their parents. And so I decided at that point, around that point, that, you know, Lord, I'm going to go away for a bit, but I'm going to come back. I'll come back to this eventually. And for the next four years, life was just miserable. And I'm not going to get into all of that, but it was really, really a difficult, difficult time in my life. Then at 19 is when I returned back. I said, Lord, if you still love me, I want to come back. You know, Because at this point, I really didn't think God loved me anymore. Um, it was just a real lot of difficult situations in, in my life. But I came back, and little by little, he started to change my heart. And little by little, I let him in. A little bit more, a little bit more. Whoa, oh, too much. <laughs> a little bit more, you know. Because every time I opened the door a little bit more, it hurt. There was a hurt. But at the end of that hurt, there was something that, 
that at that point I couldn't really name what it was, but what it was was that joy was starting to come back. That joy of my childhood, the simple, simple joy. I have a picture of myself at home. It's uh, me as a, a one-year-old. I, I figure around one-year-old because I wasn't walking yet at, the point, at that point. Now, the original picture had me and my cousin, but I cut him out. <laughs> <laughs> I blew it up and I cut him out because he wasn't smiling, no. <laughs> but I, I had that picture blown up and the reason I, kept, I want it for me is because I am smiling like the banshee in there. Like I've got this huge smile on my face and in my eyes there's a simplicity, there's a joy there. And I'm like, Lord, that's what I want. I want that joy back. I want the joy of my childhood back, you know? So that started to, to come very slowly, though. And then I heard about Nat. Now, at this point, when, when I was 19, um, when I first came back, I thought, well, you know, maybe the priesthood might be something I'm called to. And, but my idea of the priesthood was he was up on the pedestal and everybody else was down here. It was kind of what I got from my parents from pre-Vatican II type stuff, right? And I'm like, I don't want that. I don't want to be way up there. Like, no, I'm scared of heights. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to be up there. And so after a couple of weeks of thinking that, I put that off to the side and I just, I just left it. And um, then a, a couple years later, um, the, the librarian from our school um, came. It was a Catholic school, high school, and she came to me and she had called, or she had called and she wanted me to go on a vocations retreat weekend. And I went for one day and left. And um, then she called me again saying, you didn't give it a fair shot. You left early. And, and she says, you know, God is calling you to the priesthood. And I said, well, until he tells me, I'm not doing anything about it. <laughs> you know, that's nice. Anyways, so... Um, so she left me alone, except for I'm sure she prayed for me a lot. Anyways, then I heard about NET, NET USA. Now, that's, that's way before NET Canada was even being thought of, all right? This is at, in 85, um, at the beginning of NET, and when the Companions were starting. And I thought, oh, jeepers, this means I have to go to the U.S. You know, now at that time in my life, I didn't think a lot of good things about the U.S., <laughs> okay? And so I said, Lord, you're going to have to change my heart. You have to change me. And over time, he started to change me. And I, I knew that I was supposed to go to, to Net USA. So I went there for, for two years. And actually, my second year is when I heard about the Companions of the Cross. You know, at that point, I'd heard that um, there was a community starting in Ottawa, and I thought, well, you know, well, that's nice, but I'm not called to be a priest, right? I didn't want to be a priest. Um, that was the furthest thing from my mind was to be a priest. Um, and so when I, but by the time I left NET, my heart again had changed. It's like, okay, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do, you know? I'll do whatever it is that you want me to do. So... I got back to Canada. I started working as a youth director in southern Saskatchewan. And there I went on, um, uh, what was it called? It's, it's like a curseo, but it was search. It's for, for uh, young adults and teenagers. And I went there because I was, gonna, I was able to meet a lot of the young people from the diocese because I was the youth director for the diocese, and this was a perfect opportunity. And my aunt, who's a gray nun of Montreal, she was going to be given her testimony on her vocation call. And I'd never heard it. You know, I'd never heard it. And now this aunt, she, she makes me look quiet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and, she has, and she's got such a great, great joy, and she loves being a sister. She loves it, you know? And I've always seen that in her. So I was really interested in hearing what she had to say. So the weekend came, I went, and 
you know, I heard her, her vocation call, and it was wonderful. And I had her knew, already known part of it. This is my mom's sister. But before she went in, she was dating my dad's brother, okay? So, uh, and so I kind of knew a little bit of the, the history that she didn't necessarily share at her vocation. Um, <laughs> her thing there. So anyways, as I was driving back from, from uh, the retreat, one of the things I heard was the Lord say in my heart, it's like, I don't want you to get married. I want you to become, I want you to, oh no, I don't want you to get married was what came. And my response was, if you want me to be a priest, I'll do it, but not for three years. Because I just started as a, 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 my job as youth director, and I really felt that that's where I was supposed to be, working with the teenagers in that diocese in southern Saskatchewan. A couple weeks later, a woman from the charismatic prayer group that I belong to in Swift Current in southern Saskatchewan, she came up to me. She says, I have a word for you. <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, when people have a word for me, I kind of like, okay, yeah, right, all right. You need to tell me what it is, you know. And she said, she says, God doesn't want you to get married. And I thought, well, what we do, you know. <laughs> Anybody can say that, <laughs> you know. And then she said, and he wants you, or he doesn't want you to get married, and he wants you um, to be a priest. I saw you with, a, I had a vision of you with a Roman collar on. And now her husband was a doctor, so I kind of thought, well, maybe she got into some of his medication or <laughs> something. And then the third part of it was, but he doesn't want you to start studying for three years. And, yeah, that was kind of my response, too. <laughs> Only I started laughing. <laughs> and, um, and she kind of, well, what's wrong? And then I explained to her what my prayer was a couple weeks before. You know? So I stayed on with this job. And, but I knew in the, the, the depths of my heart that the companions was the place I needed to be. Even though um, the bishop of the diocese, Bishop Delaki, wonderful bishop, um, he wanted me to stay for the diocese, but I told him, I said, I, I need to check out the companions because I don't see a brotherhood amongst your priests, and I need support. I know me. I need support. And there was just something in my heart about the companions, and I didn't know anything about them. I knew they were charismatic, and I knew a couple guys that had joined them, that I got to meet on net. And so after three years, I moved down to Ottawa. That was 1990, so that's, uh, it'll be 20 years this August. And um, my life with the companions, um, has been something that I treasure. You know how scripture talks about the pearl of great price? For me, that pearl of great price has been the companions. Yeah, we're a goofy bunch of guys. And you know, are we perfect? No, we're not. We're broken men, but we know that we're broken. And the great thing is we're broken together, and together God will heal us. Right? God places us into the situations where he, where he wants to make us holy. So I've got 38 other priests <laughs> and 10 seminarians to make me holy. <laughs> I'm a tough case. <laughs> but the joyful thing is, is I'm there to make them holy too. <laughs> I think they got the tougher case than I do. <laughs> but the call to, the, call to the, the priesthood has been a really wonderful, wonderful thing. Like when I came to the seminary, when I joined the Companions, it was like, okay, well, I'm not sure. I'm just kind of checking things out. But then what happened to my heart? It changed and changed little by little by little. Before I was ordained to the diaconate, 
I asked Father Dennis, I don't know if he remembers this or not, but I asked Father Dennis, when do you know for sure, like for sure, that you're called to be a priest? You know, and you wait in anticipation. <laughs> I'm going to find out. <laughs> and he says, about four or five years after you're ordained. <laughs> Isn't that a little bit backwards? <laughs> Isn't it? Anyway, so I was kind of disappointed. But um, after about four or five years of being ordained, um, I found out he was right. I was pastor at St. Timothy's in Toronto, and it just hit me all of a sudden. You know what? The priesthood fits like a glove. The priesthood fits like a glove for me. And there was a real, there's a real joy for me in the priesthood. Yeah, there are days where you know, you get out of bed, you know, jeepers, I just want to go back to bed, you know. <laughs> Put on my CPAC thing there <laughs> and go back to sleep. <laughs> you know, when you get older, you need these machines to help you sleep. <laughs> but all in all, there's a real joy in the priesthood. You know, there are a lot of, a number of men are being called to the priesthood, a number of women being called to religious life. And I think one of the issues of, for them is the fear of making that commitment. Am I going to be happy? Am I going to feel fulfilled? The answer is yes. If there's that call to the priesthood, yes, you will be fulfilled. The Lord will give you that joy. Now, it may not happen the day after ordination, but it will happen. You know, for me it was four or five years. I think it was five years. You know, where I just knew that this was it. This was my place. And I was so glad. I'm so thankful to the Lord that he has changed my heart. And you know what? He continues to change my heart. Not only my heart, but your heart as well. If he's not changing your heart, then there's something wrong. You know? It's like if we're not moving forward with the Lord, we're kind of moving backwards. So come to the Lord continually, asking him, Lord, change my heart. You can be with the Lord 30, 40, 50 years, and you still need to ask him to change our hearts. When I came to the Lord when I was 19, and I looked at these people thinking, wow, they've been with God for, you know, they've been following Jesus for 20 years. Whoa. Wow, they got to be holy. <laughs> holy smokes. And they got it made. You know? I've been with the Lord now, well, let's see, 19. Well, I don't even know I can, my English is, or my math is terrible. So I'm 50 now. So 19. Can anybody do the math for me? 31 years. Okay, there we go. 31 years. And I'm like, shoot, man. <laughs> I thought I'd be holy by now. <laughs> but what I am by now is that I know that the Lord will change me and he'll continue to change me as long as I give him permission to do so. So brothers and sisters, this year we celebrate the year of the priesthood. Pray. Pray for priests. Pray for your parish priests. Pray for the diocesan priests as the bishop asked yesterday. Pray for the bishops in the world. And pray for vocations that young men won't be afraid to say yes. Not only young men, but older men. Hey, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That one was for Father Bob. <laughs> You're talking about uh, 4.0 um, discernment. I've come up with 5.0. 
That's for late vocations. And then now there's 6.0 for even later vocations. So I'll share that one with you later, all right? <laughs> pray for priests, you know, and pray that we would be holy men willing to sacrifice our lives for God's people. And if you get mad at one of them, pray for them. If you get mad at me, pray for me, okay? We need to pray. God bless, and I think I made my time. <laughs>